Good evening and welcome to our special coverage the day after the election results. Is 2024 a done deal as the Prime Minister says? Well, that's what we've been focusing on for the last hour and in this hour, we'll be looking at the state of the opposition, particularly the Congress party. Is the Congress party in a state of terminal decline and will it be in a position to be called the principal opposition party anymore? To really get into what is going on with the Congress and what lies in the future. We have uh, two senior leaders with us, Salman Khurshid, of course, with the Congress, and uh, Rita Bhaguna Joshi, senior leader of uh, the BJP. We also have Jasmine Shah from the Aam Aadmi Party and joining Jasmine us, Shah. Basu, the AAP now emerging as a sort of uh, yes. principal contender in, in those areas where the Congress is weak. That's right. And so Rita Bhaguna Joshi is uh, with us, and. Uh, We've got a great panel. Salman Kurshi, the thanks very much indeed for joining us. It's a difficult time for the Congress, so thank you for coming on. A lot of your leaders don't want to come on, but you've come on. Uh, let's just cut to the chase, Salman Kurshi, because, you know, to go back into existential questions, should you introspect, hold meetings, I think we're sort of past that. I think it's time, Salman Kurshi, to ask the direct question that is it time now to just have a new change of guard at the very top? Because Ultimately, all accountability, you know, there have been so many electoral failures. Is it the Gandhis have had a long run? Is it time to now have a non Gandhi? Give them a chance. Well, I mean, I, uh, I should have been at the G23 meeting if, uh, if I was of that view. Uh, <laughs> I'm not, and that's why, and that's why I am with you. Uh, I, I will not, uh, I will not. Uh, underestimate the challenge that that we face now uh, and I think that uh, underscoring whatever has happened in the last uh, couple of years is is uh, not going to serve any purpose there will be inevitably there will be a serious think uh, within the party uh, we'll go back to the drawing board I'm sure but uh, for this purpose the working committee, has been has been uh, uh, summoned and the working committee will begin this matter but, and i think for me Kushid, to jump to conclusions yeah, that's, what may Mr. Happen, Kushid, that's what's been board. happening it's like we're like in like this auto replay mode because since 2014 you've had countless cwcs you've talked about introspection are we still at that stage where the congress will inevitably as you said uh, look at these issues isn't it becoming a well, bit too I, late all I am saying is, please wait till the working committee takes place. I mean, if the if there is a collective meeting of the party leadership, uh, it would be extremely unfair for me to jump the gun and say, well, this is what the party is doing or will do. Or no, no, no. Sa Salman Khushi, we, we, you're you're too senior and and well regarded for uh, for not for you not to have your own view, right? Uh, you're entitled to that now. To just go through the usual playbook, have a CWC, have a resolution, pass that resolution. The waters have risen too high. Don't you feel personally that when you have a crisis this acute, it's time to give somebody else a shot? What's the what's the I, what's the what's the, what's the <laughs> argument against that? If some if a group of people no, are not I, able to run a company or a political party or any entity successfully for years, then someone else gets a shot, right? What there what's, is much. Sure, sure. There is much that can be said and I'm sure will be said in due course. I'm just not uh, prepared to, to bring everything out in the open here before the working committee meets. Uh, I'm not saying that, look, we should just turn a blind eye to what has happened. No, nobody is going to turn a blind eye. Okay. We will, we must and we, we, we will in due course come up uh, with, with certain responses. If you think that we've we've taken too long, well, perhaps we have, but we will come come back with responses okay. oh. to to hold out to hold out something here that may not necessarily be help in what we want to do is something I'm trying to avoid. Okay, okay. well, maybe we can have a discussion on the weather uh, <laughs> since you are here. But anyway, uh, before we come to Rita Bhaguna Joshi, Jasmine Shah from the AAP is with us just for five minutes, Vasu, uh, because wow. he has to go on to another channel, which I don't envy the task of, you know, spokespersons who have to go from channel to channel. But Jasmine Shah, you guys have had this big win in Punjab and you've had it at the cost of the Congress, the Akalis, and you're now eyeing Gujarat, Himachal, even Karnataka you're looking at. 
Uh, now, is it going to be a challenge, though? I mean, even though the Congress may be weak uh, structurally in Gujarat today or even in Himachal, um, it's not always going to be easy to replicate what you did in Punjab in these states. You're still finding your feet outside of Delhi. Nidhi, it is absolutely not easy. Let me admit that. Um, India is large and a party like ours, which runs with honest money and has very meager resources, it takes a lot of effort to build our presence on the ground. But our biggest asset is that today we have made a place in the heart of the people across India, not just where we are uh, winning electorally. Today we have won with this kind of a mandate in Punjab uh, only because, uh, you know, people of Punjab have been tracking and following what uh, the Kejriwal model of governance has delivered in Delhi. Today, people expect that if AAP is elected, if AAP is an option, if we are strong in any state, then we will build them good schools. We will build them uh, good mohalla clinics, hospitals. So it is this model of governance that okay. has endeared up to the people across India. Right. And it will be a matter of time. We are fully committed to going. It will happen slowly. It will happen it will not happen all at once. Okay. Let's just get uh, Rita Bhaguna Joshi in. Uh, Rita Bhaguna Joshi, you listened to Salman Khurshid. He's your former colleague. I'm sure you both have a lot of regard for each other. But you were in the Congress. You had reasons. You were telling us yesterday, uh, you know, why you left. What would you say to somebody like Salman Khurshid at this time who still seems to think that you meet or have a CWC meet? Is it too late for that, all that now? Well, I think I'm in different party for the past seven years and I'm nobody to advise them in their internal affairs. And I have extreme regard for Salman Bhai and uh, uh, what I feel is that the party has lost its focus. They have lost the strength to speak inside in a democracy is not there at all. And one who speaks, they're known as G23, G22, whatever it is. So I think it's time senior leaders should stand up and talk. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to advise them on anything. I only feel that it was in 2012 or 14, when this voice, strong voice should have emerged. It is but too late. They are lost in the road and I think uh, like leadership on the gains, no, I would you say. Don't have to, you don't, and, uh, it's not about advice though. But you, you but feel that the Gandhis... Three months before, no, but three you months think that... Rita ji, but do you think it's time that the Gandhis now step aside and somebody else gets a shot? Do you think that leadership is not well, worth? Well, it's for them, that it's for them to decide. But what's your view? One thing, is very clear, one thing is very clear, that the people have rejected the leadership of Rahul Gandhi ji. One should, one should be... There is no doubt about that. And uh, they have immense faith in the leadership of Narendra Modi ji. So it's for the Congress to decide what they want to do with themselves. Uh, they want to go it alone everywhere. Look how they messed themselves up right. in Punjab. Now our party, uh, you know, right. spokesperson is saying right. people are influenced by our model of uh, development. No, it was not a positive vote. It was a negative vote. People were annoyed with it. Uh, okay. Okay. No, no, so Salman, yes. yes. oh, Salman Khushid, I know you don't want to get into specifics. You're saying you don't want to lay out your cards on the table before a CWC happens. But is do you believe, can I just ask you, that do you believe there is space for a non-Gandhi to lead the Congress? And that that, sh that is an option that could be on the table? Well, I, uh, listen, I, I, I personally think that... Uh, uh, you're narrowing things down too much. Uh, I mean, I I heard what uh, Rita Ji said, and I, let me reciprocate that I hold her in just as high in esteem uh, as she said she holds me. We we have been very very good friends and colleagues. But uh, having said that, let me just say that there are uh, there are basic issues. BJP has raised this as well. There are basic issues about the way this country wants to move forward. Right now, we, we may disagree with that, but they have a mandate. They've been getting support repeatedly. They have a mandate. We disagree with that. For me personally, if you disagree with the BJP mandate or the BJP point of view, you have to articulate your point of view in no, with sir, a sufficient, big, compelling, compelling Mr. argument. <laughs> yeah. This, is not, uh, this yes. is not right now about wider philosophical questions of mandates. This is about a crisis within the Congress party and, and, and how it can be fixed. And it's not about narrowing the focus. It's really, as I said, every uh, institution, if it goes through this crisis under the leadership of X or Y, there is inevitable change. Why is it so difficult for the Congress party, for leaders like yourself to come out and say, listen, 
maybe we need change at the top or to explain to us why you think it's so important that the Gandhis continue on. Listen, I what I, are they I, bringing I to the I, table that we're all missing? I understand. I wish I didn't have to get into this because there are people with different views on this. There are people that you just said who are meeting separately at Mr. Azad's house. No, but we're asking view your view. <laughs> no, no, my my, my <laughs> view my view would unravel things that I don't want to unravel now. I mean, a lot of things that Mr. Azad's group there uh, is is wanting to change. I would say uh, those things happened because of them. They didn't happen on their own. So I don't want to get into a, you know, That's you said this and I said this. Intriguing. I want to wait. I want to wait till my party collectively, collectively, so my party. Can, can we put it this way from what you just said that you're saying that it's not fair to blame the leadership of the Congress alone? I just, I just didn't use the word blame at all. I was talking about decisions and choices. I didn't even use the word blame. Okay, let me. Whatever. Happened. Let's try Whatever another attack. <laughs> and let me try something. Let, let's try another. <laughs> Rita ji said that it's clear that the people of this country have lost faith in Rahul Gandhi. Would you agree with that or disagree? No, no. But is Rita, Rita ji saying that the people of this country have faith in the Congress party and in Salman Khursi? She's not saying that. She has chosen. She has no, no. She's saying the people of the country have lost faith in Rahul Gandhi. Is that a? I know. Is, would you agree she's or disagree? Specific, she's chosen a specific point of view, and that's not a point of view that I share. And I said to you right in the beginning. But having said that, I still need to do something about the state of affairs we are in. And I told you collectively we will reflect upon it, and we collectively we okay. will come back. Re the Rita first Bhubanaji. thing we have to do. Is Okay, Rita ji, I just want to ask you, I mean, I, I know that, you know, you're in a different political camp today, but would you say that having a, a, a strong opposition is important in a democracy at the end of the day? Or I'm not just in terms of words, but having been on the other side, uh, that actually this isn't good for India to see the principal opposition party decline. Or do you think it's good that other forces like the ARP well, are coming up I as alternate, possible alternatives? No, no, no. I, I've always... Well, I've if there are alternatives the emerging... News, that's for Rita Joshi. A strong opposition is absolutely necessary. A strong opposition is absolutely necessary. Good leaders should never lose. This stand has been taken for the past 20 years. Whether it's in the opposition or the ruling, good leaders, Folks, people who can speak well in the parliament should not be defeated by the electorate, one thing. But the second point is, you see, the leadership in the Congress has lost connect with the people. Now, when they say, Larkyu, Lar Saktyu, it has not gelled with the women. They must have been excited, mm. but it did not connect them as the, if they should have, the slogan should have connected with them. However, Modi ji has, has an excellent connect with the people. Now, how he connects through various means, through the, through the uh, you know, programs that he that he uh, uh, releases, or for that matter, when he has his up uh, man ki baat, or when he talks to the people over the phone, or over the radio. See, all the time, he connects with the people so okay, beautifully. Rita ji. In, when he goes to programs, so the question here is: See, this man. No, no, this, but Rita ji, just one thing. Yeah. You're saying that you're saying that the BJP is is, you know, is really. I'm not saying a, a, BJP. A, no, no, you're saying that the BJP is is a, a much better performing party. Its leadership is is connected but some would question also if you just saw what happened in this election uh, your own son joined the Samajwadi party uh, which which then you know raises that question that what is the issue there if the BJP is so amazing then why did no, that happen? He was, he, was never a, he was never an active member of the BJP please let you understand and if he has left it's his own choice in a democracy every member of a family has a choice hmm. every individual has a choice so I'm not going to discuss his choices. What I am saying is pragmatic analysis of the situation. My analysis is right. that the leadership in the party, see, Jawaharlal Nehru had a direct connect with the people. Mrs. Gandhi connected so well with the people for decades after her. People in South would say, Amma. You know, they connected with them. Now, this leadership at the present for the past one decade yeah. is unable to connect. When they say something, people don't believe them. They don't trust them. So the okay. question here is, the Congress, I'm not challenging Congress's ideology. I am saying they are an, if if they have to emerge as an opposition uh, they, or as a, right. as a strong political party, they have to connect. 
Wait, oh. uh, Reena Gupta of the no. Aam Aadmi Please. Party joining us Let's as well. Uh, uh, Reena Gupta of the Aam Aadmi Party joining us as well. Uh, Reena Gupta, how do you think that the opposition space will play out now? Because clearly the Congress is in, in this sort of state of decline. But there is also now more jostling within the opposition for who the natural leader of this alliance could be and should be. So there's Mamta Banerjee, there's Arvind Kejriwal, there's the Telangana Chief Minister, there's Sharad Pawar. Does that actually complicate the opposition's efforts? So Nidhi, uh, you know, it's a, India is a big country. And of course, uh, you know, there are several regional parties. But as far as Aam Aadmi Party is concerned, I think Mr. Arvind Kejriwal is the most well-recognized face across the country. You know, we hear of uh, uh, people winning on on AAP tickets, even from places like Assam and Kerala, where we don't even have a party sangathan. So it's very clear that Mr. Kejriwal has emerged as the strongest face of the opposition, especially after the victory in Punjab. But so, having but, said uh, that... Rina, once again, when you say most well-recognized, are you saying he's better recognized, as, I mean, as an opposition face than Rahul Gandhi? I don't think, you know, the recent uh, results, uh, Vasu, from the five states, it's very clear that Congress and Rahul Gandhi are not being uh, given a chance by the people of the country. Everybody has lost hope in Congress and Congress has no other to blame but themselves. You know, be it Goa, be it Madhya Pradesh, it's their own MLAs that sell off and go and join BJP. So why should I vote for a party where I'm not even sure that their MLAs right. will stick with the party and not sell out? But, so, uh, but what also, makes Arvind you know, Kejriwal say a more recognized leader than a Mamta Banerjee? They both had st uh, amazing success in their sort of right. respective regions as it were. So why should it be Arvind Kejriwal say over her? See, if you look at uh, especially the northern uh, part of the country, uh, you know, you look at Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Bihar, UP, uh, I don't think... Uh, uh, Mamta ji is really recognized in all of these states. Oops. <laughs> and this is a huge Ma part of the country. Mamta ji may not take that very kindly to that. She was just in Banaras, in fact, recently campaigning for Akhilesh. I love the picture that we have of Mamta ji right now. It just fits in <laughs> looks, with what could have been the reaction. Upset yeah. But uh, Nilanjan. But you know, just one, one last point, Vasu, just, that I want to make. Not, just yeah. one last point. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of one of the important things I think which uh, which the CM of Delhi yesterday made, he said, we all always say that there is no alternative to Modi ji, there is no alternative to Bharatiya Janata Party. So his message and our message to all of those people who keep saying there is no alternative, please come and join Aam Aadmi Party. <laughs> let us all join okay. hands. And uh, you know, let us let us not lose hope. Uh, we keep thinking that kuch ho hi nahi sakta. कुछ हो सकता है पंजाब के लोगों ने ये करके दिखाया है और पूरे देश के अगर ओके वॉइसेस मिल जाएं तो वी कैन ओके ऑल राइट सो 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 आप त्रिनमूल बोथ डोर्स आर ओपन बट निलंजन दिस होल आइडिया वी कीप गोइंग बैक टू दिस अगेन एंड अगेन कांग्रेस कलैप्सिंग रियलिस्टिकली दो फॉर अ पैन इंडिया ऑपोजिशन पार्टी टू कम अप इज गोना टेक इयर्स राइट आई मीन इट्स नॉट एन इजी थिंग दैट्स राइट आई थिंक we're looking at 2024 um, it's still a large number of different Congress contests and if that's the case then what we know from 2014-2019 is the BJP head-to-head against the Congress has more than 90% strike rate. so uh, opposition unity or not opposition doesn't have much of a chance so the only question then is how does the opposition expand if it's not just about the Congress, right? I think in numerical terms, we have to be honest about what the state of play is. In narrative terms, both Mamta and Kejriwal have shown that they can uh, be a strong opposition leader, even if the numbers are not there yet. And I think what these state elections show is that some of the rot at the national level of BJP versus Congress is creeping into the state uh, in, into state elections. The big challenge will be that if the Congress crumbles in one of these big Hindi heartland states, a Rajasthan, a Madhya Pradesh, a Chhattisgarh, 
is it an Aam Aadmi Party or a TMC that can come and fill that void? They each have strengths. Aam Aadmi Party has a very popular leader, very modern campaign techniques. TMC has a popular leader, particularly seen as pro-poor on welfare delivery, has the ability to build party networks very quickly, which the Aam Aadmi Party hasn't done in Punjab even, right? So that becomes the open question. And, you know, uh, that's not something we know yet, but that's really when an opposition other than the Congress will emerge. When in the Hindi heartland, one of the Congress parties implodes. Okay. All right. Well, interesting, interesting times ahead. Uh, never a dull moment in Indian politics. Is Absolutely. And let's really see how this entire Congress story plays itself out. Will there be any big disruption or change or will it be business as usual? Thank you all so much uh, for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for watching.